Well, hello. I accidentally, <laughs> I accidentally pushed the live, go live about 30 seconds too early, but I hope it won't mess up my YouTube. Uh, if it will, I'll straighten it out. There'll be nothing to it. Hope everybody is doing good tonight. Um, then <clears throat> after us, uh, I hope you go over and watch Dusty's uh, 321 report at 8 o'clock. Dana will be back in just a minute. I, I've got her blank, her quilt there on the wall is the only thing showing right now. Coming. She's coming. Uh, the dogs are in true form today. They were really excited about seeing us after being gone for a week, and they were just all fired up, and they haven't allowed us out of their sight today just about. So um, what we want to talk to is an interesting case that I want to cover tonight. It's Heather Elvis is the name of the female, Heather Elvis. And it's a kind of a, it's a, it's a sad case and because uh, after you, learn everything about it you'll learn that most of even her parents probably feel like she is not with us anymore however uh she is not found yet so we don't know where she's at so that's why we featured her and i want to cover some other a couple of things hey y'all <clears throat> okay let me go over to here uh heather uh, was uh, a little bit here. Let me go back to the first thing here. Just read this first. The disappearance of Heather Elvis. On December the 17th, 2013, Heather uh, of South Carolina, Carolina Forest, South Carolina, went on their first date with a man that ended up when uh, he dropped her off at her apartment at approximately 1.15 a.m. And at 1.44, she was called her roommate, uh, Brianna Wor Worthman. 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 Worthman, <clears throat> who was visiting her family to tell her how the date was had gone. So they, she didn't disappear from the date. They confirmed that she was dropped off and... Uh, this guy is not involved in her disappearance, and you'll you'll see why in a minute. Um, the date had, had been Elvis' attempt to move on from relationship with Cindy Morer, Sydney Morer, a repairman she had met through her job at a local restaurant, and that ended two months earlier. The girl's conversation lasted approximately ten minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Her roommate advised Elvis against returning uh, Sydney's calls and cautioned Elvis not to do anything rash or, or get and to get some sleep. Elvis' cell phone activity ends that day at 6 a.m. and Elvis has not been seen or heard from since. The roommate said that uh, basically that that I, I think Elvis had uh, received a call from Sydney saying that he was breaking up with his wife. He was married, and he was leaving his wife, and uh, he wanted to talk to her. And uh, so uh, her roommate was saying, hey, give it the night. You know, don't do anything rash. Give it the night. Um, this is where she worked. She worked at a place called Tilt the Kilt. It's a Scottish place where the girls, they, it's kind of like a, uh, Hooters type atmosphere. The girls wear these uh, uh, the outfits uh, that are a little provocative, you might say. A little. Um, and uh, this is another picture of them. The guys wear the Celts too. And this is that's of course she is not in in these pictures here, but I just wanted to show you what kind of restaurant that she was employed at. And <clears throat> excuse me. Her, the repairman, she'd already had this crush on him even after she found out he was married. And they supposedly had an affair. And the wife of this guy found out about it. And there's two different stories about this. She first sent her texts saying, you know, my soulmate just confessed to having an affair with you and 
you, next thing you might do is watch out for the wife and kind of vague threats to her. Yet when after she had disappeared, uh, Heather had disappeared, they interviewed both the husband and wife, this Sydney and his wife, Tammy. And they, Tammy uh, first said, I don't care if he has sex with a hundred women, we have an open marriage. And I got more friends and she, he's got girlfriends. But uh, apparently mm -hmm. the police didn't go for that because they ended up arresting uh, both. Uh, he is on the left or my left and she is on the right and uh, arrested them both for murder and kidnapping at first. Uh, had uh, They stayed in jail for about, uh, I want to say, six or eight months before they were released, I believe, on a $100,000 bond each, uh, is what I end up reading about it. Um, they... He, there's believed that, that this guy had coached Heather into meeting him at a, about three miles away at this boat landing. Here's a picture of the boat landing there. It's uh, a peace tree landing, I think it was. Uh, and uh, what happened was they traced her phone uh, over to that area. And later on, her car was found abandoned there. And that neighbor had had one of these ring cameras or surveillance cameras on the house and had seen a uh, house right down the road. And I think it's that first house you come to, you can see the roof of it, uh, had seen a black truck come down into that area and a black truck leave, but did not see her car leave. And uh, the black truck was uh, one of the, uh, Tammy's truck or Tammy and the Sydney's truck, they believe it's a black truck. That's all they have, but they had one just like it. Tammy and, and the Sydney guy had one just like it. Um, there was text messages from Sydney to that. They recovered from, um, the phone. I think it was Heather's phone where Sydney had made several attempts to contact her and Heather had come back and said, Hey, I believe you're obsessed with me, you know, but it is believed that, that they, they murdered her or did something with her because she is nowhere to be found. Uh, this is a, uh, absolutely, a wanted the poster from her, uh, around December, uh, the, of 2013, uh, after going on a date, she found her, uh, her car was found abandoned by her parents, um, home and her phone activity reportedly involved a conversation with a married man, which is going to be Sydney Moore. She has tattoos, multiple tattoos and other in the pictures, uh, on this. Um, I'm trying to get over here to to show you, uh, uh, she reported missing 2013. Uh, the Moors were taken into custody on 2014, a charge of kidnapping and murder in connection with the disappearance of Elvis, who was 20 years old when she was missing. The trial was originally scheduled to take place in May of 2015 but delayed until March 2015, yes. Did they find her body? No, Okay, they never did. MH said she was found dead. I never, I, everything that I have looked up, I could not find where she has been found. And I checked as of 4 o'clock this afternoon, but I, you, you may have found a, a site that I haven't gone to. Uh, they said basically right now the uh, they were trying to find it, but but the thing is the murder charges were end up being dropped, and they they were convicted of kidnapping. See, so it says we're unhappy the news the murder charges is dropped, but we have faith and hope that we're still held accountable for the remaining charges, and they actually did get found guilty 
of kidnapping and cons conspiracy to commit kidnapping, and each of them got 30 years in prison. And I imagine if they do find a body, they will be uh, charged with uh, murder. This is his prison photo from South Carolina. He does look quite a bit different than he did when he had the goatee and the, uh, the long hair there, but he's got, I can't see it. he got 30 years for kidnapping and 30 years for conspiracy to kidnap and 10 years for obstructing justice, but they ran them concurrent, which means basically all of them will be at the same time. If they ran them consecutive, then he'd have to serve 30, plus 30 plus 10 what i am so sorry i the, the chat just totally disappeared, disappeared. I, i'm going out and i'm coming back in in just a second to see if okay. i can figure out what in the world i have done this is tammy she was convicted of kidnapping and conspiracy to commit kidnapping she got 30 years and also is running concurrent which means basically if it was Alabama, that mean they could possibly get out in 10 years because they have what they call the good time law. It means if you basically are good in jail and don't cause problems in you know, 30, your sentence been served, you can get out on parole. So, you know, I prefer in cases like this that they are charged with as consecutive, that they would have to serve 30 plus 30 plus 10, which would be um, 70 years, basically, rather than 30 years. Um, we do have a, uh, some a timeline of it, and this is highlighted, and I'm going to do the best I can in reading this. Um, at 1.12 a.m., Sydney purchases a pregnancy test from Walmart, Walmart, Walmart has him on cameras. He believed that Heather was pregnant, though for whatever reason, that's what the information that I have. He calls Heather from a payphone. The call duration was four minutes and 53 seconds at one, uh, 135 to 140. The video of Sydney making the call is now admits to making the call, but says it was just to tell Heather to leave him alone. At uh, 144 to 146, Heather calls her best friend and roommate, Bree, who is away with her family in another state uh, at the time. According to Bree, Heather was upset and told her Sydney said he left his wife. He missed me and wanted to see me. See, so, uh, you know, the call lasted two, two minutes, 20 seconds. Heather's phone attempts to call the payphone, but there's no answer at 229. So they believe, police believe that they coached them, her into coming down to the boat landing, and then they did something to kidnap her and possibly murder her. Uh, 229, Heather's phone attempts to call the payphone, no answer. Around 242 to 256, Heather's phone is uh, at Longbeard's Bar and Restaurant in Carolina Forest. At 2.57, heads to Augusta Plantation Drive and then turns around. 3.01, returns to Longbeard's in, in Carolina Forest. 3.02 to 3.15, Heather's phone remains at Longbeard's. 3.16, Heather's cell phone attempts to call Sydney's cell phone the first time immediately as she's leaving Longbeard's, but there's no answer. Six at 316, Heather's phone heads back to her apartment. You know, it's amazing what they can do with cell phones now and, and track. This is, it turns up. That's why I guess a lot of people get rid of the cell phones when they, they, you know, do a crime or I even heard of somebody that escaped from prison had a cell phone or got a hold of a cell phone and he took it through in the back of a truck and that a long haul trucker was heading out west somewhere. So they thought he was out west somewhere when he was the opposite direction. Uh, at 
319 to 324 Heather Sloan remains at her residence. 317 to 321 Heather again attempts to call Sydney's cell, cell phone and it is answered. The call's duration is 4 minutes 15 seconds. Heather's phone is still at home at this point, and Sydney's phone is at Moore's re Moore residence. So they, the prosecution, heftily implied that it was, it could have had TM taking, talking to Heather here. I guess Tammy talking to Heather, and Sydney uh, is now admitted to the payphone call as the. See, and I butchered it up the other. Uh, 17 to 21, call said in C at this point. Yes, prosecution implied that Tammy were talking to Heather here. And Sydney was now admitted to the payphone call as the stop calling call. And it no longer seems that he's claiming this particular conversation with Heather at the first trial. Um, Sydney also denies this conversation until police confront him with Heather's phone, phone records. And then he says he did talk to her, but he just to tell her to quit calling him and leave him alone. Uh, at 325, 337, Heather's phone moves from her residence to Peachtree Boat Landing. And this is where they found her car at. 336, a private video surveillance camera captures a dark colored Ford F-150 coming from the direction of the Moore's home and heading towards the boat landing. The camera is uh, 1.2 miles from the Moore's residence, or I think that is, I can't hardly read it. Uh, 3.38 a.m., Heather's phone attempts to call Sydney's phone but there's no answer. Heather's phone is now at the boat landing. Calls are attempted from Heather's phone to Sydney's phone again at 339, 339 at 46 seconds and 341. 339, a business video located a mile from the first camera and closer to the Peachtree landing captured the same vehicle still proceeding in the direction of the boat landing. 3.41 a.m., Heather attempts to call Sydney again. 3.42, Heather's phone data activity ends at this point. 3.30, 3.45 a.m., first trial, her phone data ends at 3.41 in the second trial. And I didn't understand the first and the second trial. I didn't, I just, I didn't go into that much. The same business video camera captures the truck coming from the direction of the boat landing <clears throat> excuse me and heading back towards the moore residence the camera is approximately 1.2 miles from the landing but no none of her car the her her car didn't do it um Sydney also denies the conversation until police confront him with Heather's phone records. Let's see. Um, that's that's it. I don't know what that okay. third one actually mm. was. The Her Facebook one. page is still up, and she's like, and on um, December six, two thousand thirteen, she said, "I'm in a uh, in a relationship." Somebody asked who with. She said, I'll tell you tomorrow. Um, and then July, she was in a relationship also. And there are several people that are posting on there, hoping that she's out there and going to come back. I just. Um, yeah, I, I doubt that very seriously. One is she was very close to her family. And why would she leave her car, yeah. disappear down there? They, they came down to the boat landing. I guarantee you her account's been hacked and somebody... No, no, no. This is back in 2013 before oh, she oh, came oh, missing. Oh. Her, yeah, well, that's that what, is still up. That is probably the man that she... The married guy. Well, there was two. There was one in July and then there was the one December 6th. So, yeah, probably... Probably the married guy. December 6th. Because she tells her friends in the club that she actually... Uh, 
you know, is, is head over heels in love with him, and he supposedly is in love with her. And apparently, I don't know what, you know, the wife, apparently, she told the police there was an open marriage, but obviously from some of the texts that I saw, <clears throat> it wasn't an open marriage at all. And it probably did something to her, especially if he thought she was pregnant. Or, you know, she he went in and bought a pregnancy test, and the information that I I had read that he bought it, he told someone that he thought Heather might be pregnant. So, you know, somebody posted they fed her to alligators. Well, that's awful. You know, you're you are down there next to a boat land, and they could have <clears throat> if they throw her in the river the chances of her being found are high because the body does not stay down. Okay. Now, if they waited, even if waiting the body, it's not a guarantee. Um, one, um, one of the things um, this lady posted on there, she said they took a trip to Disney, Tammy's favorite place, at some point shortly after uh, she came up missing. If I remember correctly, I've always believed they left her somewhere along the way, somewhere in Florida. Now, uh, what it just was, her opinion. they were arrested, and when they made bond, their lawyer convinced the judge that he could, that uh, the guy couldn't find work where they lived in South Carolina. So they convinced the judge, which is crazy in my opinion, to allow them to move to Florida where he could find work which you, you're out on a, a kidnap and murder at this, at this case, and you let them leave the state. Now, I think whatever happened to her happened at that boat landing, and, and maybe this is a case where Adventures with a Purpose will go and, and see maybe if she's weighted down, if they can find some type of skeletal remains from being weighted down in that area, because they obviously did not have a boat, so whatever happened happened around that that area and i mean it wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of time uh, you know if i could let me see if i can find that when that other car came back through there um 345 the same business video camera captures the truck coming from the direction of the boat landing so you're talking about 345 between the the phone goes dead at 342 the 345 you're talking about three minutes for them to do something with her unless they knock her in the head put her in the back of the truck and take off with her which is very there's possibility they could have done something with her took her away from that area which i didn't you know i, I guess i just realized how probably that happened they probably had some carpet or whatever and they could have knocked her out, put her in the back of the truck, and then went somewhere and disposed of the body or whatever. I know that them finding their truck down at the landing would at first give everybody with the point of view, well, she's in the water. But there was only three minutes they could have done anything with her, and I believe it would have taken longer than three minutes. They could have forced her at gunpoint into the, into the truck. Too. I mean, she they, she didn't have to be assaulted. And I'm wondering if police did take, check the truck for DNA. You know, that was that would be one of my questions, whether or not they would do it. Can somebody check and see possibility that I missed that if she her body's been found? No, MH said that she hadn't. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. I can't be sure. But if you go back here and look at this, this is the boat landing where her, her vehicle was found. I just don't think there's enough time, three minutes, to uh, dispose of anybody right there. You know, it's swampy and everything, but three minutes is not a lot of time. MH said that it hasn't. She checked. Okay. I cut my finger. Uh... <laughs> Again? Yeah. I don't know what it is about cutting my hands. Uh, any any comments about this? What, what do y'all think? I mean, you know, 
I hope they rot in prison. Well, yeah, 30 years. But like I said, they'll probably do 10, 10 years if they, they have a good time. I noticed on his prison record on him, he, uh, on the second page, he had a, uh, where he was training to be an electrician and uh, he failed to comply and he was terminated in prison, a prison job for as a trainer and electrician because he failed to uh, appear for the job. So, you know, he can't, he can't keep a Jennifer job in prison. Jennifer says she thinks she's in the Florida Everglades. I don't know that they would take a chance yeah, on taking the body. Yeah, right. I, I think, stopped, well, here's the thing. They could have probably taken her in the truck or done something with her and put her in the back of the truck, probably forced her to get in the truck to go with them so that the worst case scenario, it would be kind of was taken. But uh, I don't think she's near the boat land. And I think that was just a ruse to get her down there, get her somewhere alone, do something to her, take her either by force or do something to her down there, put her in the truck, either up front or in the back and then go somewhere and do something if they if they murder her, do something with the body. If not, I just don't believe anything's out there at the, where the the boat landing is. It's not they don't have enough time, three minutes for the time the time. Her phone quit, no data to uh, the truck follow went by that camera was three minutes. Three. So that's not enough time in my opinion. Uh, what did you have, Dana? Um, I was looking. There's somebody posted some stuff on here that I let me just read. Um, talking about her roommate testified the box was not in the trash can before she left. What box? I don't know. Um, um, I thought the test that Sydney bought was on the night that Heather disappeared. I guess the pregnancy test. That's what they're saying. Okay. They're saying he bought him like a one something of the night that she disappeared. That's what, that's what they're saying. Uh, that's what the, uh, let me see. Said, I, it seems there was enough time for her to go back. Maybe to get another one. I don't know. Uh, see okay somebody said post something here hold on if i can get it to come up from 302 to 315 at edens edens testified that elvis's phone remained at long beards right. then starting at 316 the phone was headed back to elvis's residence arriving there three minutes later the phone was at Elvis's residence for five more minutes before moving from White River Drive to Peach Tree Boat Landing, yeah, starting we, at 325. I think we covered that uh, in this one right here. Uh, 325 or moves from the residence to Peach Tree Boat Landing. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt. It she said there was two separate tests. There was two, two tests. Uh, pregnancy test that we're taking. No, that's no indication of what I read, but it could be. Uh, you know, she might have, uh, when Sydney called her and said, I'm leaving my wife, uh, I want to see you, uh, this might have been enough to drag her out of the house to go meet him at this peach tree landing. And then what happens? They, the husband and wife both show up. They, but you got to remember, three minutes is the only thing between the time she called him and the time her phone went dead, which they could have grabbed it and just threw it in the water. That would make it go dead. That would be, you know, be over. And then they could have forced her in the truck. Or How long after did they go something. to Florida, somebody asked? Uh, I think it six was... months. It was like they were in jail for like six oh, months. Oh, they got arrested right away? They got arrested. Uh, the, where they went to I Florida was I'm after sorry. there. They got arrested in 2014 for uh, kidnapping and murder, but they ended up dropping the murder charge. So they stayed in jail for six months, the way I understand it. 
and then they they got out on a hundred thousand dollar bond, and then they convinced the judge they needed to go to Florida for work, which is a, I'm telling you that's the most stupidest thing I ever heard of. Why a judge would do that? Well, it sounds like maybe the, the okay. She disappeared. When did when were they arrested? How soon after she disappeared? Oh, uh, let's see. She reported missing on December the eighteenth. Okay. And then on the Moors were taken into custody on February two thousand fourteen. So they could have taken a trip. Months. They could have taken a trip between that time. Baby. Sure, they could have taken a trip anywhere between yeah. that time. Uh, charge of kidnapping and murder in connection of disappearance. That's what somebody's saying that they took a trip. Yeah, the trial out. was scheduled for the May fifteenth, but delayed indefinitely in March two thousand fifteen. Uh, basically, they were focusing on trying to find her, which in turn. Um, oh, they're saying they dropped it. They said that one of the tests was for Tammy. I disagree with that. Could be. We don't know what it is. We don't know, but this but these is a picture parents of both deserve of them. to know. Both of them know. I mean, you know, the thing is that I'm sure they don't want to. If they get convicted, they could get the death penalty. But if they get convicted, they're probably going to be life without parole. What they need to approach them with some evidence that they hopefully they'll find the body and um, or find out what find happened out what to happened them. and then approach them with a, you know, I will. Jennifer, we have no idea yeah. for sure when they went to, um, to Walt Disney World. No, it could have been before they had, were arrested. Yeah. They were two, uh, two, well, three months almost. No, MH, I haven't heard from Lynn lately. Um, I do want to cover a couple of other things, though, apart from this. There is um, a crazy lord about that young girl, right? Mm -hmm. The young girl you told me about? Yeah, this is the one here. Uh, missing New Jersey's teens photos were shown up on a sex trafficking website. And this was, of course, back, this is in 2019, which I just read this. But she was actually found one week later after her disappearance. But this goes to show you uh, how, you know, a runaway, say, said a New Jersey mom desperately searching for her 17-year-old daughter is now beside herself as the authorities told her this week that the teen's photo is showing up on sex trafficking websites, according to a new report. Uh, this is Aunt Ivana Weaver. Uh, was last seen September 12th in Holly, Mount Holly, New Jersey, according to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Now her worried mother says investigators made a disturbing find, and this was uh, in New Jersey. Uh, we have pornography pictures, and my daughter looked completely upset and unhappy in the photos. Um, they told the station investigators believe she was in danger and being held against her will. She's 17 and looks upset. Uh, they got tipped off that her daughter might be near Broad Street and Aaron Avenue in Philadelphia and uh, secure the everywhere police on bikes. Uh, she told the outlet. Now they did find her. They did find her. Uh, you know, uh, said people think they saw her in the area of Wednesday uh, around 1 a.m. They did find her. The teen's phone had pinged in West Philadelphia since, and, and since it's been shut off, her mother has told the outlet. Uh, that failed, she said. Her phone was there, and they're changing number constantly. Let's see. Burner phones, flip phones, burner phones. She was a mixed race, five foot four, two hundred pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. Um, basically, I think she left because it says here she never done this before. She told the station, "This is her senior year. She went to school for the first few days and didn't disappeared. She missed an eye appointment." 
She doesn't have any clothes. She's not, uh, this is not like her. She hasn't been known to be on any drugs. She, she doesn't, she, we don't have family or friends in Philadelphia. It's completely out of character and scary. So they did find her in Philadelphia. Now they're not saying if she was runaway, they're not saying if she left on her own, if she got groomed, you know, somebody grooms her into a modeling, you know, they have these all over the internet, you know, you want to be a model, you want to be an actor, you want to do this, then meet us at the Holiday Inn. Hey. They think, oh, everybody says Holiday Inn, that's got to be right, it's got to be safe. But what they do basically is they just get people in those situations and they groom them for being trafficked. Okay, so my face is really, look, I've been out gardening today um, and cleaning the house, but anyway, um, about five years ago, a van pulled up at the mall in Birmingham, Alabama, and two guys get out and they've got clipboards and they go into the mall and the, the van had no windows on it. They go into the mall and they proceeded to ask 100 young women and women, um, if they would like to come out, that they're, they're, they're model material, would you like to come out and let us get a few pictures of you, you know, out um, by the, you know, in the sunlight and by the van and stuff? How many of those hundred women and young teenagers do you think went out there? Y'all put some numbers up. I'll tell you in a minute. It will shock you. It will shock you. You know, you think, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go out to, and then, and then the thing is with this van was once they got out there, they did take some pictures on the outside, but they said, really, we got lights and everything on the inside of the van. Come on in and we'll do these uh, control shots. And so then just this, keep guessing. Keep guessing because the number that actually yeah. got in the van is the one that's going to shock you. Okay, this one also, I want y'all to take some time out when y'all are not doing nothing. You got a free time and look into this. How many of y'all have listened to this? And I don't know why they scratched through this. The most dangerous active serial killers of 20 in 2020. And these are, these people have not been caught. Okay, they have not. They're called the smiley face killers. And a group of retired detectives uh have a have an agreement between them they researched these people they did a special on this three percent they estimate up to three percent of all the unsolved murders are are worked by serial killers it's impossible to know for sure because they haven't been caught yet but we know about some of them and here here's the deal with this they have that gives me the creep they have all of the victims have been found, most of the victims had been found in water. And they have been ruled accidental drownings. They have been ruled all kinds of stuff. But they're young, white males. Uh, they, some of them are come from the uh, gay community. Uh, but they've been found in, in the waters. And they've been, uh, the news media has called them accidental, they got drunk, fell over the railing, or, or they drowned accidental, but they have, <clears throat> they have looked at autopsies where these people died before they got water in their lungs, which tells you they did not drown. Um, and this, uh, the next little article I have on it, I'm very, I'm very interested in this. this if, you, if you think there's more possible a young guy with some alcohol in his bloodstream that night, indeed drowned accidentally. Well, the FBI agrees with you. So the FBI even says, hey, it's okay, we believe this. Then again, Giverson, uh, Gannon, and uh, Duralt, I can't think of it, say that they discovered that some of over 40 victims they believe have been identified had been missing for weeks, yet their bodies only show signs of having only been dead for days upon discovery. In other words, they missing six or seven weeks, and yet 
they found them in water, uh, a body of water, and the autopsy says they've only been dead for a few days. The bodies Ooh. have traces of the uh, infamous date rape drug GHB, with which could be used to incapacitate the victims before kidnapping them. Even more chilling, the trio think that the smiley face killers might be involved in as many as 335 deaths, accidental drownings, or serial killers. Uh, that's a lot of senseless deaths. And, and here's the thing. They started investigating these missing people that were later discovered near water, and they found the smiley face. Now, you look at it again here. They found this face near where the bodies have been found. And we've seen those faces. Yeah, I have faces. actually. Yeah. We've actually, and I'm wondering now, I've seen, of course, you know, you see people do those faces around as a joke, but they found this particular smiley face where it actually looks like the eyes have got two tears running down it and a smiley face near every one of these bodies that they'd investigate over 40 of them. But they said now that they put it out there that other jurisdictions are looking into where bodies have been found near the water or in water and where they had ruled them accidental and finding this type of thing near where the bridge is. Now, the weird thing about this is they believe it's not just one serial killer that's doing this. They believe it is a group of serial killers that kind of have formed their own little kind of cult of these people that think it's uh, they're doing this or kidnapping people, holding them for several weeks involved in whatever type of ritual type thing. They Who knows what they're doing to them. And then they're killing them by drowning them through getting them so intoxicated on alcohol that when they throw them in the water, they can't swim out. And or they just drown them or kill them. And then they put a smiley face within. It doesn't have to be like on the bridge. It could be like 100 yards away. But it is it is very, I want you to read about it. It's called the smiley face killers. And notice what I said killers they believe it is multiple killers that are involved in this some type of what does the fbi thing? believe the number of serial killers on america's streets on any given day 35 i think it is that they believe that there's any given day there's many as 30 to 35 active serial killers in the united states practicing at one time you know zodiac never did find out who the zodiac killer was they did just recently decipher a, um, a siphon that he put out to the news media. I think a, uh, someone in the military or had military training did that. Aaron wants to know, Thomas, is this unusual, a group of serial killers? Yes, we, yes. We really very, don't know. Well, we know that, that the serial killers that they've caught, Bundy and all the others, have never been acting with another you know you did have those two girls that killed all those uh male down oh, yeah. in, in florida and they worked as a pair um uh, i can't think they did do a uh, netflix on them had a uh, thing on them monster i think was the name of it uh it's very unusual but it's not to say that there'd be a whole group we don't know if they're talking about one or two they don't know if they're talking about one but it is weird that they are finding by these so-called accidental drownings they're finding a smiley face which these group of detectives these group of retired detectives are going around they they seem to think they can tie all of these stuff together more so than just a somebody drowned here because you know you, you got to think about this somebody goes missing uh on the first of on new year's eve and they don't find their body till the end of february and they find him like down from a bar that he used to go to but he hadn't been seen in three or four weeks 
uh, dead inside a, uh, a river. Now, there was one town in particular where I think this all got started. It's somewhere up north uh, where they had a couple of people drown, two or three, I'm going to say. And they, they attribute it to being drunk and just falling into the water. But, you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, I had drank my share in college of alcoholic beverages, and I never fell over a railing into the water. And I've been around bridges and, and everything. It just doesn't, I you know, most of these bridges, unless they stand up on top and dive over into them, it's not just easy to fall off a bridge, even if, and I've been around drunks and, and at police work. But and you quit drinking when we started dating. Yeah, Your friends didn't like you no more. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't like him because he quit drinking. Um, uh, wait a minute. Somebody asked something. Um, uh, Cheek No More said, I thought Monster was about Elaine Wam Wamas. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the what, the two girls that were. It was, they, they said were it was two girls that were gay. One girl, all she did was she knew about the killings, but didn't turn her her lover in. Uh, so it was. I mean, you could say that she was not actual the serial killer, but if you know about it and you're not turning them in, you're just as guilty as the person that did it. You know, and the, how the law sees it. You know, it's it's uh, accessory after the fact, uh, but I don't know. Um, whether what about the uh, the sniper up there in uh, the two sniper the the black guy the two black males that they started off by killing a I think they robbed a, uh, a store in Montgomery shot one of the people inside that went up to DC sniper. They were up there and they were shooting out the trunk of a car and they both were involved in that. That was, and that was a form of serial killer. I mean, they were shooting uh, innocent people out the trunk of a car. So yeah, it is pretty rare, but in this case, what they're finding is a lot of stuff is happening in cities that are long ways from each other. So they figure, if there is some involvement, it may be something that has developed because of a relationship issue with these people. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. You, it's, it's worth reading about. It's very interesting. And I wish I could think of the documentary. I think they did one called the smiley face killers and, um, they are still looking into it. It's not something that they, didn't find the guys, so they're they're uh, they're holding off on it for sure. Uh, any more questions about anything? I know we want to get out of here by the time that Dusty. Yes, said so that on. was a really good show tonight. Well, I uh, appreciate it. Okay, so I was telling um, Aaron had asked me about my contacts. Y'all, I got my contacts in. So <laughs> when we were in Gulf Shores, I put my contacts in to go out and. I was driving down the road and all of a sudden my left one started <laughs> hurting. So I pulled over and I took it out and I squirted some stuff on it and I kept trying to get it back in my eye and it was giving me fits. But finally I thought I got it in my eyes. I pulled my eye down. I thought I got it. I'll use this finger. thought I got it in. And then I shifted gears and took on. I said, I don't know. It's still bothering me a little bit. I can't really see out of it. I don't, I don't know. Um, so anyway, that night when I got home, I took the, the right one out. And then I dug and dug and dug and dug and every which way trying to get the, the left one out. I mean, my eye was blood red by the time I was done. I couldn't find it, the left one anywhere. So, <laughs> so two days later, I get in the car to go somewhere and I had asked God. I said, God, where in the world did that contact go? I didn't know if it went back in the back of my eyeball or what. And I shifted gears and when I did, there sat that contact. I picked it up and looked at it and it was scalloped around and it was dry. <laughs> anyway, I took ran in and showed Tommy I'd found it and I stuck it in solution thinking, ah, you know, it's gone. So I called the eye doctor and told him I'd need another one. Well, guess what? This morning I got up and I thought, wonder if it looks good. Wonder if it'll go in my eye. So it went in my eye. Now, the fun thing will be if I can get it out tonight. But anyway, so I'm enjoying the, the, 
contacts. It's just so did, anyway. Did I did I lose y'all just for a second? Hold on just for a second. I'm trying to find something that Dina sent me and I've reduced my screen to uh Yeah. Hold on just a minute, y'all. Do you still have me up there, Dana? I still got you, baby. Well, I mean, okay. I got you on live stream because I couldn't keep, I couldn't do it on. Um, okay. So I guess MP4. he's still there. Gotta try to Are get you fixing this. to show him? Yeah, I'm trying I, to find one. Oh, trying to find to. this one. Uh, these two movies that, uh, oh, I, this dog puts her toe, my whole arm inside his mouth. If I can get it to get it to work here, okay, y'all, hold on just a minute. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. I'm okay. Not sure. Hold on just a minute. Okay. We're going to try to get a couple of picture, a couple of movies here that they took in Ghost Shores. These are not our These dogs. These are not our dogs. This is a big, huge dog that I was around. Nick, uh, Friday uh, night, I'm going to find those two pictures Anna did posted side by side. Remember when the dog was newborn or, you know, six yeah, months old? Yeah, and, you know, and I'm going to have to post them because I can't get, Aww. I can't get them to, to, to show up for whatever reason they're not downloaded, right? <sighs> I'm sorry. I know okay. I'm not supposed to apologize, but I did. I don't understand what what that what that uh, I I post uh, I tried to post the uh, I see where they are, but they're. Hey guys, if you get a chance, go get you a journal and start journaling to your children, even if okay. they're grown, or journal to your grandchildren. All right, I, I'm getting I'm. I'm going to show a couple of films here. If this one actually downloads enough, one, this dog is the, is beautiful dog, but he is huge. He is very huge. And he took his whole, whole mouth and put it around my arm. I mean, his whole mouth, but now I'm trying to download it and it's slow as Christmas. Okay. So what I was telling y'all, go get you a journal and start journaling to your children your grandchildren. I have 14 journals full for my children. And if the Lord gives me any grandchildren, I will start a new journal for them. I've got my 15th journal I'm working on now. And all I do is I write my prayers to God. In the back of it, I put dreams. God has given me dreams. Um, he gave me a poem in the middle of the night. I would love to tell y'all that poem, but I'm not sure um, it might hurt somebody's feelings on here if they haven't all right, now I'm gonna play issues, but it's a great poem, and I'm gonna play one of these, and then hopefully the other one, the one that the dog swallowed my <laughs> hand, will be downloaded by then. Okay, all right. Okay, I like to teach him all these words. Okay, sit, shake, the other paw. Okay, down. Oh, he doesn't like play down. It's okay. Okay, center. Go. Oh. <laughs> sit. Oh. That oh, is that is very awesome. Good. Good. That is very good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have like his rag on standby. Bang. Oh, you got that? Good, good <laughs> lord. <laughs> no bite. No bite. Stop. No bite. Yeah. He was not biting his mouth. In. Okay, mouth. go over and see Dusty. Tell them we sent you over there. God bless y'all. And, and see uh, you Friday night. See you Friday. Bye.